Hi friends, Max El Haj here. On this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we have training think tank athletes, Travis Mayer and Alessandro Pacelli, who just qualified for their seventh and eighth individual CrossFit games, respectively out of the Mac and Granite games. And we talk a little bit about their stories and shoot the shit together before Travis leaves for the dentist. See you there. <laughs> Train along some of the best athletes in the world at the sport of CrossFit. To get a free sample week of our current training cycle, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. Have we said congratulations to Travis yet on the podcast? We have not. Congratulations to Travis and Sandra for Yay. making the CrossFit Games as individuals. Now let's get the rest of the 25 Two people. people. Who didn't stay on the podium, <laughs> but are going to the games. Right off. Hey, I don't What's need up? to stay on. The goal was to get there. We did it on purpose because it's year of the octopus, fourth and fourth. Eight. Team took fourth. Team took fourth. Oh, West Coast. Who's going to be our people who go fourth <laughs> at West Coast? We got one girl, one guy. Well, oh, we need both of them to take fourth? Well, no. It just seems like that's what's going to happen. No. It's not. I don't think so. Okay. I just I just planned that. I, I didn't, didn't want to go into it with <laughs> yeah. winning. Like, come on. I was on track for podium, and then <laughs> after day one, Travis texted me and was like, uh, you can't finish better than fourth because I own the gym. And I was like, okay. And then I tanked the second day. <laughs> on purpose. And on purpose. To and make then Travis I was like, feel better. Yeah. And then the last day, I was like, all right, I'll lock it up in fourth. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Minnesota yeah. was hot as hell. Oh, my gosh. So bad. It's just funny because I remember before, everyone's like, I don't want to do Granite Games because it's going to be so cold. I don't like the weather. I'm like... What are you talking about? It's, it's like hotter than any yeah. uh, semi. 97. Well, that was the main reason I didn't choose it first. Because it was cold. Because I was like, I looked up and it was like, ah, it could be possible snow in May. And I was like, oh, man, I really don't want to Oh, yeah, go. it was you. And yeah, then, it so, was. <laughs> so my initial decision to go Mac was one, because it's closer. And two, because I thought it was going to be cold at Granite. And I was like, nah, not a chance. And then when I saw that they were pushing the events back because it was hot, I was like, mm, God, I chose Mac oh inside God. of the AC. Which test did you like better, Mac or Granite? Now that you've qualified, you can. Um, I I mean, from she a programming so Granite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from a programming standpoint, I think like Granite Games. Maybe shots fired. Shots yeah, fired. Had, <laughs> had some better events, but when I look at the at Mac, I think that I could have maybe squeezed in there, but there was a lot of uh, really good people there. So a lot less room for error. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. what do you think? So you're saying there's more room for error at Granite? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only kidding. knew like of the, I'm kidding, you know, I'm the, kidding. yeah, the two teens. And then, you know, there's a couple of other veterans, but then there's a lot of no names. So I felt like, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was strange. Mal got so much like press and pictures and all sorts of stuff, but that girl, Emma Kerr, was beating her until oh, that yeah, last they're event. Both legit. Yeah. yeah they're both pretty they good. both did pretty well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why do you think that is? What, the press? Why, yeah. Why didn't, why didn't, who you say, Emma? Yeah. Well, See, I, I don't even like know the, her name. I, well, I <laughs> feel like the events that Mal won, she, she dominated. She yeah. Smashed. And so then it was she just. She had a like, whole bunch of firsts, right? How many? But then it was like the first day. Like that thruster one, I think like started it. Mm. And then it was like, okay, the focus was like now focus on her. And then I feel like she capitalized on some other ones where she like won. Yeah. But the Emma girl took second, like points wise, like she was close, but like the dominating, whatever, like out front people are just seeing that. So then they're like, oh, that's like that guy snatching 345 oh yeah. or yeah. 340. That was crazy. That was insane. That's more than most people's clean and jerk. Yeah. You guys both PR'd your snatches. Yeah. I, I matched. I tied my. Tied PR. Yeah. <laughs> I PR'd. You PR'd, PR'd. Is it considered a PR if you tie a PR or no? No. No, no. Yeah, maybe the definition is a, record. Yeah. yeah that's not a, a PR. That's the second not time. Tie. Second Personal time. tie. <laughs> PT. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was happy about it. Um, I haven't done that in a long time. And then considering like I did pretty close weights. Yeah. Like uh, close to that. So yeah. But like when me. I watched you, what was it? 190. Oh, you man. opened with and you missed, I was sitting in the sauna when all this was happening. <laughs> so I had my computer outside the sauna, halo therapy saunas. Yeah. Check them out. Great. No, uh, Get out of here with your plugs. <laughs> uh, oh shit. You got sponsors though. Yeah. Oh, what kind of, uh, so then the laptop was sitting out and I was watching and I was like, uh Oh, 
but then you pull it right again. I was like, there you go. She, that uh, judge tried almost no rep. Oh yeah. Cause I think she didn't realize like I can, um, I don't have to be finished before the time, yeah. as long as I start, it's like she had a minor, uh, Oh, see so yeah, like a Mac, confusion. you had to be done. No, no. Oh. Yes, you did. No, I'm saying it wasn't a great oh. game. So oh, I was yeah. saying a Mac, that it. was our standard was you had to be done with the lift before 20 seconds. Yeah. That's why people like snatched it right away versus like, waiting till the 20 second mark if they did miss. Yeah. Got it's it. amazing to me that people hit three attempts in 20 seconds. Who yeah. did three attempts? I think Medeiros hit missed twice and then hit his third one right at the buzzer. That's no. Crazy. No, yeah. I think it was just two. <laughs> just two? I mean, if it missed was three, three times. Or somebody. No, no, no. Not missed three times. Missed twice and hit a third. Yeah? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'll look it up. It might not have been him, but I'm pretty sure that somebody Dang. did that. That's in, impressive. In the in the mail heat. Was it someone hitting like 185 or? <laughs> At all. I mean, I, people are strong. How many people, how many females were over 200? Do you remember? Um, I know there was another girl at 210. Um, there was quite a few at 200. Yeah. Uh, Nicole, Nicole hit 215. Yeah, Nicole hit 215. Emma Carey hit 200. That's all I can remember. Yeah. And a lot of people snatched over 300 at. 300 is the new like 275. Yeah. There which was is crazy. How many? There was the the guy we at three forty seven. Yeah, at ours at Granite. There was the three forty. Chandler was three oh five, and I think there was two three hundreds or yeah. something, or two three oh fives. Something like that. There was a couple three hundreds. I look at the leaderboard. See how many people. I mean, that's a games. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're going to the games that snatched yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely Chandler, Emma. T did Tim snatch three hundred? Paulson, to no. Tim Paulson, <laughs> no, Roy, so. Roy Gamboa, no, no, he, he power snatched. He power snatched. Two. That was impressive. Yeah, I was also like scary. Yeah, his feet were like the wooden platform. His feet were on the rubber by the time he caught it's good it. Good grip. Yeah. He was going out there for the grip. Strong as hell. Yeah. Were you were you watching Travis hit three hundred? Yeah, Would I you, was in the gym with the whole gym crew, and like everyone went crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have got video for you, but I, I can put it up on the nest. How did that yeah. feel? Because I was sitting there watching at home because I had also got. If you listen to the team episode, I also got the stomach flu, <laughs> so I wasn't there yet, and I was watching on the stream. And because you won the quarterfinals, correct, you had the best placement in the heat. So yep. that meant you went last. Yeah. And as I saw these other people putting on 300, I was like, Ooh, I wonder what Travis is going to do. And they finally showed you. And I was like, Oh shit, he's going to try for 300. And I knew that what your best is 295. Yeah. And I was just like, yep. come on. And then you hit it. That's <laughs> it. It was worth it. I feel like, like I two knew seconds, you were going for it. Cause I feel like oh, whenever the bros are training, they're like, Oh, he's going for more. And they're like, I'm going to, you know, and I was like, there's no way he's not doing 300. Well, I just, <laughs> Pretty like, standard. Yeah. I wasn't really like paying attention to what everybody else was doing, but I could like, you can hear them announcing it. And then I turn around Well, I went 275, 85. And then my next jump was just going to be 95 just to like get a good number. But then I already knew a bunch of people had 300 already on the bar. And then it was like, Ben hit it. Travis hit it. Someone else hit it. Scott hit it. And then I was like, all right. And then I just looked at him and I said, 300. And he goes, can you hit it? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just literally like, shrugged my shoulders. It's a big vote of confidence. Well, I'm like, you fuck it, it, put it on. I was like, I've never done it before. Yeah. So then I was like, You well, answered though. It was so yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, it was a pretty cool moment. Yeah. And I sat the, in the stands that time and I had everybody, every single lift there. And at the time there were like, a bunch of two eighties. There was no one, there was no one above two eighty five. There was one 300, I think one and the guy three ten. Yeah. And then there were four people in that heat at 300. And I'm like, well, two ninety five <laughs> and two eighty five are going to be like the same thing. I was like, well, fuck it. Just try, try. it. <laughs> yeah. So then it was worth a second. Yeah, it was definitely worth so it. So it was a, uh, it was a pretty good moment. And it was pretty cool to finally do it on the big stage. Mm. Cause I've tried a lot in here. Yeah, we've and had. Then, yeah, there's been a lot of bets. There's been a lot of things. Oh, yeah, someone was going to straight up give you five hundred bucks to hit a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah thousand yeah. bucks. How many times have you seen Travis get baited into a bet to try to? Oh hit? my god, but all the time they're like, well, you hey. know, it's supposed to be like eighty percent, and then we look over at the guys and they're like maxing out. They're like, yeah. and then Laura and I are like, what the? I thought it was eighty percent today. Our eighty percent are different. Yeah, I'm talking eighty percent effort, not percentage of the weight. Yeah, eighty no. percent effort with eight yeah. misses. Hey, no. no. Get out of here. <laughs> no one when was the last time you watched me miss eight times snatching? The time Jake bet you. Every other time except for the Mac. <laughs> yeah. No, I tried that snatch one time. because I did not try that one the time. The 300 I tried one time. 
Just once? Yeah. I don't believe that. No, because we built up and it was all the power snatch. That was the day I power snatched 280. Okay. And then I went 285. And then this was the video Chris put out. And it was like, oh, squat. I knew. Whatever. It was a squat. Okay. And then Jake said in that moment, I'll give you 500 bucks. And his buddy said, I'll give you 500 bucks. That was 1,000 bucks. And I went over to you and you're like, do it when it mattered. <laughs> you did. And so then. You did. I was right. And then I said, screw you, because it was like 1,000 bucks. So I wanted to try. Yeah, you can't turn that it. down. No, yeah, I might as well try. And it was on tape. Yeah, and then I missed. Yeah. But I did do it when it mattered. It was a good feeling. Speaking of doing it when it mattered, didn't you win the last event? Yeah. How'd that feel? I felt pretty good. Just you didn't even yeah. know. I didn't even know, not going to lie. She I crossed. thought I got third. I was walking back and I was like asking, like, what did I get on that? And you guys are like, you got first. I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> did yeah. lunch? Yeah. Did that work out? Yeah. yeah. Did I get seventh? Yeah. <laughs> it was a pretty dominating, cool end. Yeah, no, it felt good just to have no doubt that yeah. I qualified. And yeah, yeah. that's there a good feeling. Yeah. yeah, I wanted. Well, Nicole was next to you, and that didn't go as planned. But <laughs> up until that point, I was like, "Oh, come on, you guys can both do it. Mm-hmm. You can both do it." Man, so bad for her. Yeah. Oh. Nick, so Nicole was Nicole in fifth McGinney. place. Yeah, Am Nicole I saying McGin- that right? Yeah, McGinney. Yeah, I think so. She was one. She was originally two points out of fifth. And somehow, like right before the final event, the points got switched up and she was in fifth by one point. Christy Aramo was like, I don't know, a couple points behind that. So super, super tight. So that well, last- there was a girl between her. Between It was like Christy, that oh, Caroline, Caroline. Oh, yeah. Connors Car- yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And, and they then, were all like 10 points away. Yeah. And so there was like a super, super close gap for first- a super close gap for fifth and a super close gap for eighth to get into the online qualifier. Really at that point, all you had to do was just like not blow up. Yeah. Yeah. I already knew because Akeem loves to calculate everything. (laughs) And he's like, worst case, if like, let's say Nicole got first and Caroline got second, you would have to get 11th to still qualify. He told you. Yeah. So I, I was like, I feel like, yeah, he always tells me that. I should so be able to gives, get 11. It gives me like, cal- I don't know. I, yeah, then like I, a little I, calm. Yeah, it makes me a little calmer. I'm like, okay, I know what I need to do and I know which girls I need to watch. Yeah. So then, because the risky part is like, for example, that lunge, you blow up and then once you blow up, you can't do it. And then that, you know, so sometimes it would make more sense to be more conservative to make sure that you like stay ahead because, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. That, to that, yeah. girl. that lunge ate up a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. The, With, I don't think there were any females that went the whole thing unbroken. No. no. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And Chandler, I think, might have been the only guy that think did it unbroken. Only... Yeah. I think so. I didn't know if Roy did. Yeah, I don't know. Because yeah. Roy but, was I mean, pretty he far was definitely behind the, him. Yeah, but I mean, he might have done it unbroken. Oh, Anthony Davis. He did unbroken. Oh, mm-hmm. in the earlier heat. Yeah. Yeah. But no one else. Yeah. I was kind of surprised with how much that destroyed people. I mean, I get it. It's the end of the event in competition, yeah. but I feel like that like was a big separator. Yeah. Like you almost could have gone slower on the first part if you just lunged immediately after. And there's a lot of yeah, cross like kind broke of weird. It up, like it, yeah. Like <laughs> broke up the first parts and then just walked over, picked them up and then just started lunging. Like you would have passed everybody. Yeah. How many CrossFit games did, did you, when we talked about this on the yeah. last podcast, did you count the, uh, the online one where you didn't go top five? No. You didn't count that one? No, because uh, including team, it would be ninth, but this would be my eighth individual. Okay. But that yeah. doesn't count last year's. No. So that would have been ninth individual if you count that as if the I CrossFit w- games. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody asked me in the stands. The one where I, they took away the. Yeah. So. Yeah. You I still kind of count that. Mm-hmm. But she didn't go. <laughs> That's yeah. like saying, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Like, <laughs> so it would have been consecutive have been. if it wasn't for COVID, but yeah, it that's wasn't what for it them is. changing them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the in-person comp getting back to it? Oh, good. Just, but it, it also felt like I hadn't been there for so long. So I kind of was like unsure of myself and, yeah. um, but yeah, now I feel better. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. That I feel like the new generation is so young. Yeah. So young. There was, but the girl who won is 27 or yeah. 28 or something like that. And she's Have a, you, do you know her? I don't know her, I've but never heard of it's kind of cool. Yeah. She's a mom as yeah. well. Yeah. And I just, it was funny. They're all like, all about the teens. But I was like, Hey mom, just yeah. won, you know, <laughs> and like, Give it up the moms. Yeah, I was yeah. like, that's true. I feel like she should get more, I know, like, she, some credit. There. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> she said she showed up, like they did an interview with her and she showed up just for the 
big mats to hang in her house. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this girl just won the semifinal yeah. like that. Oh my God. Yeah, it was kind of funny too. when we were shaking the champagne or whatever it was. <laughs> and like, then she's like, wait, like we have two underage girls here. Like I can't do that. <laughs> Is this allowed? Yeah. <laughs> These are as old as my children. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. What was it like since now you've trained with Mal because she came up here for a couple days yeah, and then you days. competed against her? How yeah. was that? No, it was cool. It's like I knew that she was legit and just for me, like a challenge to try to, you know, push the masters there. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of Do you think you should do more me. volume? Mal volume. Mal volume. <laughs> Maybe not. Not for no. me. <laughs> I'm good with yeah. I kind of learned like my what are my limits and when I'm doing too much and then yeah, if I get injured, I'm done forever. So yeah. <laughs> you guys have the veteran, the uh, veteran wisdom. Yeah. That you have to lean on. Yeah. Still. I think you learn like when you're young, you feel invincible and you just like eventually you hit a, you know, a plateau, yeah. not a plateau, but like you hit a wall Yeah, and then uh, you learn from it. Like, okay, I, I have limits and yeah. after being injured or something like that. So then now it's just become a game of staying healthy. Yeah. So. I didn't, re we didn't really talk that much about that. What has your like mental and physical approach change been like from like first time you made it until now? Like 2013. Yeah. I mean, it's been all your first year. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically like, I mean, 2012 was on a team, but I feel like I didn't count that. Yeah. 2011, <laughs> Travis was getting beat in the regional by me or oh, he yes. actually didn't even make it to regionals when I did. Should we talk about that? How many games appearances have you had? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. And won. you competed what? When there was 12 people? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. But yeah, 2013, I had no expectation. And then after being on a team and after being burnt out from rowing, I just like didn't really expect anything. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go do this thing. And then I think I just having less pressure made me perform well. And then, you know, now uh, 2014, I had a little bit of an injury. So that was like a setback for me. And then since then I've learned kind of to find that balance. And when you've been doing it this long, like you got to keep finding reasons to stay motivated. And yeah. that's, I think that's the hard part and yeah, staying motivated, staying healthy. So I think that's kind of what's changed for me. And then now it's just, yeah, finding perspective and not, I can only stay in this long for not being crazy all year long. So I know some girls like to yeah. stay, but not, not me. I like kind of go through phases. Yeah. When you, um, when you trained back then, did you train in more volume than we're doing now? Or is it just that you timed the volume or you just were at higher volume longer or no real difference? I mean, in the beginning I was coming off of rowing. So like, I definitely did like a high volume cardio. <laughs> I used to do like, so, yeah, so much like on my own and like how much giving me an idea. I can't even remember, but I definitely like ran like all the time, like long trail runs, long bike rides. Cause I had a road bike in California, like just, I feel like that's everybody. Yeah. When that's they everyone. first get into CrossFit, like the amount of working out, cause you're yeah. so excited. Yeah. You, know, you just do everything. Yeah. Like hero wads, like just whatever, <laughs> you know, like, but then like, you know, after a couple of years or once you get uh, your first injury, then you're like, Oh shit, I guess yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> What's even like the new kid who trains with Kyle. What's his name? Uh, Brooks. Yeah dude just does so much extra because you can tell he's excited. Like he wants yeah. to mm -hmm. get better and do stuff. And then at a certain point you're like, it's going to hit you. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to hit you. And then you're going to have to actually stick to the program. And you got to make sure that the extra is getting you better at the stuff you need to get yeah. better at. But I think you also have to go through that to experience the point of getting to where you are now of like, Oh, I need to be smarter. Oh, I can't do this much volume, like better approaches to how you actually do it. I think I was 12 when that happened to me, when I realized <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't at handle very, volume. At a very early age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's yeah, true. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to say it hasn't happened. I feel like our volume has just grown. Yeah. I don't feel like your volume's really much different when you're getting ready for yeah. a comp. Pretty close. So did we talk about the... I do have a question though. Do you think female uh, side... A question for me or uh, Just in general. All right. <laughs> that on the female side... Yeah, younger is better. Have, no, just say younger is better because it, it just I kind of think the female the side I think older is and better. then the male well, side we're talking about competing females, <laughs> <laughs> but females younger and then males is older. Do you agree with that? Or I don't do you know think, what you're talking about. Well, we were just watching like the Mal and Emma over this past weekend. And then you're like, I wonder from the female side, because females, as they get older, they're wanting their kids and different things and like how their bodies are developing. Do you think as a younger age, female, 
is better than it is for a younger male versus where I think like the males peak later than the females do. I think physically females peak later. I think lifestyle wise, I think most females in the late (laughs) twenties. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. What do you think? Where, where, how would you weigh in on that? (laughs) (laughs) Let's go to our token female. I think it's tricky too, because you remember like, okay, at uh, let's say the games, a lot of reps are the same as men as they are for women. So it's almost become for women. It's more about like endurance and gymnastics. And then like, you know, let's say they're a muscle up workout, 21 muscle up, blah, 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 yeah. you know, and men and women are doing the same. So, or no, there was that one, what was the workout you guys did at the Mac? Yeah. The, with the, the muscle, muscle ups. ups. Oh, and wall ball and run. Yeah. yeah. So it almost seemed like on the men's side, the muscle ups weren't the limiting factor, but on the female side, the muscle ups were the limiting factor. Yeah. So it changes the type of athlete. So then I yeah. wonder if that plays it. I don't know. I'm just yeah. calculating. I'm not but. really sure. I, I don't, I mean, we d- haven't seen any super young guys in the sport yet that are Well, successful. that's what I was saying, but you've seen females. Yeah. Quant made it at 19, I think, his first time, because he's still pretty young now. I think he's only like 24. Oh, I have. I know what it is too. On the female side, it's a lot of previous gymnasts. And on the male side, you rarely, you don't have as many gymnasts. So like really the only gymnast is Vellner, but on the female side, I might be the only one that doesn't have a gymnastics background. Yeah. And like that's, who's a, been there. that's a significant yeah, yeah. factor yeah. is having that gymnastics Well, I feel like background. from the female side too, that's a harder thing to develop. And then if you yeah. look at male gymnasts, they don't squat or do anything yeah. like yeah. where females I females like, don't either. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I feel like, like naturally they, mm-hmm. their legs almost seem bigger than the males on the gymnastics yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah, because Mal and Emma were previous gymnasts. Um, so Ariel Lewin, they said, was, was as well. Was a gymnast. Yeah. It was like, how, who could yeah. you say on the male side that was a gymnast who's a young up-and-comer? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> like, I think that uh, that's... Tola. Tola is the only one that I heard was a wrestler and gymnastics <laughs> background, and he's a freak yeah. athlete. I think gymnastics does something really good to, like, coordination, core, just, sure. like, that so, transfers well, I mean, into they strength do that with everything. Like what? all the gymnastics movements are extremely hard. Yeah. And they do everything strict and yeah. with perfect position where you come in here, like we're all like, <laughs> doing <laughs> no, different. no, but I mean like, should I the demo your old to, snatch? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Any of your boys is going to do gymnastics? Uh, at some point right now we're just in jujitsu. That's all they're doing right now. Nice. And they ever choke a fool out. No, Boston, <laughs> Boston. Boston had a competitive, the teacher told him he should do a, they're like competition class. I mean, he's five and he thought it was just going to be kind of the same thing. They play games, they learn a movement, but apparently the class was, I wasn't there, but completely different. And then like, they don't explain anything to him. Like, Hey, like tap out, like if you're getting choked, like, and then these kids just started putting moves on him and he had no clue what was happening. And this kid likes choking him out. So he just starts crying because he doesn't know what to do. And then, <laughs> I was like, God, like this poor kid just getting like, and then it happened like two or three times. Like one kid got him in like a leg bar. I mean like, or an arm bar. And he's like, ow, ow. Like what? Like, Cause he did, they, they never told him like, Hey, you need to tap. That's how you get out. So then he's just, he's like, this was worse than outer space. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, I never want to go to that again. So did you tell him you have to tap son? Well, yeah. Then it when was, I got home, too I late. Yeah, he just oh, looks yeah. you square in the face. is like, I don't tap. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so when I got home, Lauren explained the whole thing and I was like, Oh no. Um, so then he's like, I don't want to do that till I'm 10. I guess that's like the age he thinks he'll be fine and do it. That's when he's, that's when he's old enough. That's when he's like, I'm old I'll enough be ready. To- I'll be ready. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was just like, they literally threw him in and then, I mean, it'd be like you going in there and wrestling with him and not having any clue on what to do. And then he just, I just tickle him. Mm. Have you seen the tickle documentaries? No, someone told me about, Oh them. man, they're creepy. I always wonder what, what is this? Go ahead. There's like a fetish of people that like like to get tickled. Like oh, they God, get Lauren tied would down. Divorce and, me if I tickle her. <laughs> Jeez. Get tickled. Oh, I feel the same. I'm oh, like, I thought you were gonna say you're like, so I get tickled. I'm actually, like, I'm in that document. Yeah. <laughs> she get gets, away with yeah. she gets so mad. We should find out the amount of divorces that have happened because of tickling. I, I I don't like getting tickled, but I I don't think I'd divorce someone. Oh for man, it. it's a I don't of think torture. she. I don't think <laughs> she actually would, but. I mean, I'll do it. And then she, <laughs> don't do that. Jeez. And then it's just like, all right, well, this clearly is not. I don't like you. it. Cause I get the, what I call the ghost tickles is like, once you get me like the first time, 
and then I'm anticipating it. I'm already laughing even if you just put your hands up. I'm like, oh. oh my gosh. I was like, what is the ghost? Like, tickle, yeah, like the, yeah, ghost the hands. You could, you, could just, you could just pretend to tickle me after that first one, and I'm like, ah. Do you know there's people who actually aren't ticklish? I'm not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. It drives Lauren nuts because she'll like, she used to try it, and I'm like, you can. It's not well, I don't know what it is, what, why that happens. Even right. under your butt cheek? <laughs> There's that, there's that like spot. If you okay. just dig up in there, <laughs> yeah, I would show discipline. you, but discipline. Yeah. He's is he not, is oh, he's not ticklish. And he was like, I learned as a child. It's, not, <laughs> it's just pure discipline, baby. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't know if mine's discipline. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I just love, love his he accent. Was yeah. sitting, there, yeah. sitting there training himself. Yeah. I'm uh, not going to laugh. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, uh, that's funny. What did, uh, how did you respond to the fact that the building caught on fire? I had a slight panic because yeah. I, when well, you coming, need to explain what yeah, happened. Yeah, explain the story. I mean, you can't just start, hey, the building was on fire. Okay. How did you handle that? So, like, Which I'm like, get, yeah. Okay, so here's the story. I was getting ready just before my event. <laughs> and then In a long, all, long time yeah, ago. <laughs> yeah, I like trying to stay all nice and relaxed. Then all of a sudden, there's this random intercom in the room, and this lady comes on the speaker and is like, hello, everyone. We need you to evacuate the building immediately. <laughs> like, she just tried to, like, act all calm. And I'm all like, what? Like, <laughs> like packing up my stuff. Like, grab the wallet. Grab this. And it's only because, okay, California, the last two years has felt very apocalyptic. We had, or Northern California, we had lots of fires. Uh, my area was evacuated. They're crazy out there too. Yeah. And it was like, I got like some evacuation notices. So it, it gave me severe anxiety. Uh, not only that, it, they didn't tell us it was a fire. I didn't know what it was. And also last year there was a shooting right by my house on Halloween. Oh wow. And like, you just heard like sirens and everything. And so I feel like it just like, brought on like some panic in me and like, I didn't know what it was. And I just felt like that feeling like being in the apocalypse again. And when the fires, <laughs> the smoke was just so bad and the air quality is, yeah, it's just, it kind of reminded me of that. So kind of just yeah, spiked my anxiety and I, yeah. This was and in between events. So this, this is like Saturday, right, yeah. Saturday, like late morning early yeah. after, or no afternoon, right before the, the first event yeah. of the day, right? Yeah. It was the double event. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right before that. So yeah. Yeah. And people were like, the hotel's on fire. And the hotel is basically connected to the complex. It was like a maybe a five-minute walk mm -hmm. to go from the hotel. So she was staying in the hotel, w doing her general warm-up in the AC and like the, you know, just the hotel gym and then coming over for like 20 minutes to do the specific warm-up and mm -hmm. then get corralled and go out. And she showed up. I came early. early yeah. And I was like, hmm. cause yeah, typically what I do is, uh, not go to the warm berry too early just so I stay like nice and calm. And I, when I'm like around people too much, it's too much stimulus. I'm just more an introvert and really anxious person. So you, that just, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. What was it like coming out of here oh my God. in training? It's definitely been good training in that sense. There's <laughs> yeah, like always oh, shit going people. on. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you just got a cuss word. Yeah. Yeah. No. She's panicking. She's panicking. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, shit. <laughs> There's a fire. Yeah. I try to hold it in, but sometimes, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. The it gets first wild. open workout was a shit yeah, show. Yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, we let her down. No. I think that's what. Well, happened, back right? to the fire. Back yeah. to the fire. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Yeah, that was it. Basically. I mean, was it really on fire? Yeah. So the side of the, I, I didn't know anything because I was at the venue the whole morning. So I or went like late to watch the final team thing. And the guys went first that day, I think. So I was there to watch Tanner and somebody was like, the hotel's on fire. And I was like, what are you talking about? I look over and like, you can see it, it looked fine. Mm -hmm. But then when we were leaving the whole like exterior one side, like all the paint was peeled off and some of the metal was like, um, melted off. So there was like one little area of the hotel that was like, was it a room? Did on. someone's room catch? No, I, I don't, I don't know exactly what it was. It looked like maybe the side storage, like maybe that's where they store, um, food or yeah. beds or, you know, laundry yeah. or whatever. It wasn't attached to where the actual room structure of the building was, but it, it was legit. Yeah, it was just kind of And scary. I heard that it was just like a small, no. like Mike was like, I just stayed in the building. He's like, some woman came on and said, 
there's an emergency. Please <laughs> yeah. evacuate. And well, I just ignored like, it. I'm like, like, no sirens or anything. They're like, take the stairs. Don't take the elevator. And I'm like, what is it? Is it bomb? Or is it bomb? And I'm literally like running down the stairs from the ninth floor. Like, and it keeps like, wait, wait for me. And I'm all like, hurry. Like, <laughs> like running. Like, get out the building. Get out the building. Use your fucking yeah. discipline. And he's, he's just like, oh my gosh. Like, I'll tickle you down the yeah. stairs. <laughs> I remember that happening at the games in 2014. I thought it was Dave Castro pulling a like stunt. Cause our, just our floor, the fire alarm went off at like 2 AM. Mm. And then I was like, Oh, like we're getting woken up to do an event. Like, I remember about oh, And yeah. I remember I thought somebody pulled it on purpose to yeah. mess with people and stop them. From and so me. literally it was just our floor. So then we go down to the lobby, like, Oh yeah, everything's okay. You can go back. And I was like, seriously, mm. bitch, you better start a fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think that affected your performance on day two? Um, I don't want to say did, but I know Say that generally it. when I can't fully manage my anxiety, that it like really exhausts me a lot more than it should. And I've had that in a lot of events in the past where I'm just too anxious too, too and amped then up. it almost, yeah, I'm too amped up too long before and then it drains my energy a bit. So, yeah, so maybe. And that's so what you're saying is you would have won. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree that I underperformed on that event. So that's, but I don't, I can't, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know fully the reasons, but that may have been a contributing factor. Yeah. That was not an optimal day. And yeah. it was also the hottest day yeah. that I've experienced in a long time. Like 97. <laughs> yeah. Oh like it was legit hot. And I, so they, glad I chose Mac. You, I actually <laughs> wanted to ask you about this. Cause we, I mean, I couldn't tell from where I am, but j those field turfs are uh black, Pebbles. rubber pebbles. And yeah. so I would think that at four o'clock, like they think, Oh, we're waiting until it's less hot, but that's just giving that stuff all day to heat sure. up. Was the, was the floor super hot? Cause all the events were on the turf. Yeah. I mean, my feet felt hot through my they shoes. Did. Dude, when <laughs> yeah. we play spike ball at the turf field, you like can feel you it. could feel the heat through your shoes. And if you were out there long enough, you like almost want to like, even with shoes on stop. Yeah. It's hot as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, do you think it played that played a role? I, I tried to think about like, are there people, cause there were a bunch of people in the final event or the second to second event of day two that got like pulled off into medical and all sorts of stuff. But it seemed like the people at the top were the people that were kind of expected to be at the top. Yeah. Maybe it had like a minor effect, but it wasn't like significant. I mean, sure Just for me, I'm not like <laughs> the best in heat and I, <laughs> I am an Eskimo. I love to be in the cold. So yeah, yeah, I mean, but it, overall, everyone's affected by the same heat, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you've trained for it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I hate the sauna. I know all the other girls, like, sauna every day. Oh, well, from well, our Vegas, day, I Vegas is about to be hot for all yeah. of them. Yeah, I know. So I, that's smart, but I, like, hate the sauna. I wouldn't, you can't get me in a sauna again. <laughs> <laughs> why? I don't know why. I, it's so hot. Like, I hate when there's hot air. Like, I just, I panic. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do with the games? No, well, I guess I, Madison's. Yeah. Been, I've cool. Madison one year was very hot. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, for the most part, it's usually like yeah. moderate, normal weather. It's yeah. not I'd like California. Yeah. I'd rather you live train. in a place that's very I know. hot. I'm okay with being outside. Like, I feel like there's so more if you're like circulation. trapped inside. Yeah. If I'm trapped in like a box, heated you, box and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're claustrophobic. Yeah. I think I am. Ooh, I definitely Do you like am. elevators? You are? No, Claustrophobic? Really. Yeah. <laughs> About what? Everything. Really? <laughs> like, I can't, you know, those cars that only have one door? Can't sit in the back. Can't do Cars it. Cars. You know, where they're oh, like, here, let me scoot the seat up. And you get back oh, there and there's a death yeah. trap. Oh, like just a two-door. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> like, if you crash, what am I doing? <laughs> Crawl it out. No. No. But, yeah, I think in terms of heat, the biggest thing that's helped me is staying on top of my hydration, like prehydrating. Yeah. So that. Like yeah. a sauna would help you. <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> this makes me laugh. It's Akeem, or, you know, Germans, Europeans, like they live for the sauna. Yeah. And like, I went to Germany with him and they wanted to do the whole sauna thing. And I was like, I'm not going, I'm sorry. Like, I just, <laughs> I'm, I'll be here. I'm glad I did it because they're all naked. And <laughs> <laughs> and traumatized. Put your dick. Hold yeah. up. <laughs> That's not really a thing here. Yeah, oh naked. no. It's like the mandatory. Houses, right? you, yeah. If you wear clothes in there, you're like breaking the law. No, yeah, what is up with, that is that's whack. I don't want to see your crinkly old I balls. Swear, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like yeah, frowned upon. Are, like, is it co-ed? Yeah. So it's just oh, guys and that girls. That seems like yeah, a real sneaky, oh, yeah. that's it. sneak creep move. Yeah, yeah go that, Germans. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, sure. do your Sada thing happen? <laughs> oh, that's kind of weird, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do feel like other cultures are, like, more comfortable with nudity anyways oh, yeah. than the U.S. I was like, you're so well, What should you do, though? <laughs> what do you think the answer is? Should we be more comfortable with nudity, or do we have it right? I don't know. What's y'all's opinions? <laughs> I don't, know. Man, I don't in the really cro- know. I feel like the CrossFit space is the closest to being nude, comfortable with nude. Sometimes <laughs> That's true. Come it is crazy because I train at a Globo gym a lot, and like the, what people wear there versus what people wear at a CrossFit gym is Full night and day. Clothes, yeah. Some, yeah, so like you'll have a girl walk into the the Globo gym wearing what CrossFitters do, and you'll be like, just in the context of like. A gym. You're at a Globo gym. When the girl walks in wearing the CrossFit attire, you're like, who is this girl thinks she is? <laughs> yeah. But here, you're just like, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't even phase yeah. you. Context yeah. matters so right, much. Exactly. Because if you go to a pool, it's like, well, it's not a yeah, big yeah. deal, but it's- You go to a bar. But yeah, yeah if, oh, if you're at a gas station or... and a girl walks in with a bikini, you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were just at the beach 20 seconds yeah. ago? Yeah. Uh, what, what was but, going but, through your but, mind but, when but, everyone but, was having pucanos? At the Mac, Pucano. you know what a oh, volcano oh, oh. is. <laughs> <What> a <laughs> a volcano out of your butt. Oh. A pucano. <laughs> hey, no, no, it was a double cano. It was both it was sides. a pucano. As no, well. I think it was. What was it? Hold on. Friday? Put in the comments down below how many episodes we've gone where we've at least that's mentioned a, shit. Actually, that's why I wanted the only, to bring I it up. I think we're on a roll. We're yeah. at like ten now. Yeah. Uh, when did we? Fi- when did you tell me that? Well, I wasn't. Going to tell Someone you. Someone told me. But then I started getting text message after oh, text no, message. Oh, no, Sarah, my member, messaged me and was like, stay away from Mike and Brandy. And this was, I think, the day before the event. Like, they're super sick, not feeling well, throwing up. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I, then I had a lot of anxiety. And then, then it went. <laughs> <laughs> me too. By the, I get sick by this anxiety. the end <laughs> of that day, there were seven people from oh here gosh. that had it. And I was like, uh... Okay. Uh, but I was like, there's nothing I can do. Like I'm going to have to compete regardless. Like yeah. if it hits me and then I feel like Sunday was the only day I was like, uh Oh, it hit, it hit. There's some, something. I got hit by something. The but. Throwing up and puking and all that was like, uh, the least of it. It was the, like, you just felt, so, I've never felt that week in my life. I don't think just body aches and it was terrible. It wasn't did just you, the, did you come in? To the gym? I came in, but I was like, disinfected. <laughs> <laughs> spraying yeah. Clorox around you. Oh, yeah. Lysol. <laughs> yeah. Sandra comes yeah. in with a bubble. Yeah, I just someone <laughs> trying to come too close. I was like, stay there. <laughs> but the real thing was, I told Max, I said, don't you go anywhere near the team. Because he was staying with me. And I was like, don't you go anywhere near yeah, them. Yeah, so I, it kind of no, ruined my Mac experience a little bit because I didn't get to go oh, to the Oh, poor you. Lodge. But then- You still got to go watch. Get out of here. However- Perfectly functioning body. Yeah. yeah. Travis snatched 300 pounds and I was walking by Mike and Mike was super fired up. And I was like, I don't give a shit what Travis says. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave him a hug. And then afterwards, I was like, I really hope that stupid decision didn't get me sick. And yeah. I'm going to bring it back to Travis. Oh it, was, it could have happened. It was worth it. Well, not <laughs> if I would have got sick, it wouldn't have been. Well, you didn't. <laughs> to a degree, no. You didn't. No. What was uh, your, you only have a couple minutes before I your dentist two, appointment. Two minutes. What was your favorite move, moment of the competition before you get out of here? For sure, the snatch. I mean, that was just something we've worked so much on over the years. And then to be able to finally hit it in that moment was pretty awesome. And I feel like to execute fairly well for the most part across the board on the workouts with minimal things we need to adjust. Yeah. And then going into the final day, knowing that we were already qualified is a very good feeling than knowing I have to win the final event. That's the because first time that's ever happened. Yeah. I know that. That Yeah. I was yeah. almost like long disappointed. Shot. Like this is boring. It like, was yeah, such a weird it's, energy, but yeah. it's so much better than yeah. <laughs> so much. knowing you are down five points and you have gotta to win physically to get a win. chance. <laughs> yeah. And I've done that yeah. so many years in a row where I was like, this is not like, this is stressful, but to have that feeling of, okay, you literally have a hundred point cushion. Like you just, you have to beat the minimum work requirement or whatever it is. Yeah. And so from that side of things, it was definitely a, a much better feeling, but I also feel like that played a role in my attacking of the workout a little bit, just, Based off of that, 
I want but, to talk to Sandra about her have if she's been on the bubble. But before you leave, should we talk about your first field training session? You lost to me in sprint work. Is that a cause so, for concern as you lead? It into is the not CrossFit a game? cause of concern because you had a lead and a head start by two lead. yards, and we were only doing twenty yards. So by the time <laughs> you got the twenty, no, yards, no, I beat you with the two yard head start, and then we went on the same line, and you and you me. exactly, yeah. So the fact that you're saying like, you're trying to take a win off of getting like, a I take them start, however I can get them, but it was not a win. It's like a, you getting strokes on the golf course. Well, and I think it's, it y'all both there. didn't win. He didn't win and you didn't win. Perfect. But I, I like won. it. No, you should have <laughs> smoked them. Exactly. Well, we were having this conversation yesterday was about like how much of a head start someone would need in 20 yards. You're not gonna be able to make it up. If it was 50 yards, there's no chance to beat Usain Bolt. Yeah. Like how 100. much do you need? to have an advantage of a head start. I don't know. And Let's go to Alessandra. What do you think? Wait, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wait, where, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have, Great podcast. See All you right. go to Dennis. We're not Crush done. It. We're not done, but yes. Play music to get out of here. Press that button again. That one place for like four hours. Not, no, man. Press them both. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been on the bubble? Trying to recall which year it was, but I. You got the best memory in the game. I know. I. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know it was. Okay, it was at the Del Mar Fairground. I mean, most of our regionals. Were yeah. There. And I know I was in. What were the events? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember what the final well, was. I remember the final was like a sprinty, and there must have been sandbags or something. It was the Echo Bike. Burpee, move the thing, and sandbag over shoulder. Well, no, I think no. I feel like that regional or I was had a you had it. Right you were already. already in a good position. It was the year there might have been like a legless. What was the last? There was twenty one fifteen nine three two one legless. So you did twenty one thrusters, three rope climbs, move the bar forward fifteen, and then there was another one that I think was. I don't think it was that one. Thrusters right. and rope climbs. All right, we lost it. <laughs> oh my god! If I saw it on paper, but anyways, I know I remember that I was in. Pretty sure I was in fifth, and I going into the last event, but I was confident because typically, I the last events are very sprinty, and for yeah. me that's like usually my home run workout because I'm very explosive. Yeah. So like I feel it was very stressful, but like, I feel like I knew like, okay, just do what you can do and you'll be good. Yeah. But like, it doesn't feel great. I've had times <laughs> where like, you know, it feels way better when you go in and you know, you have like a cushion and you're yeah. like, all right, like I just got to get this, this and this. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I remember that like it, that I was like, okay, I have to like smash this one. And then I think I, won that one. I should like pull up the workouts. Like, five of the worst memory. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel fully like that? Like you had solidified a spot? I think you had like a 60 point lead or something like that. Yeah. We talked about it briefly. Yeah. I think or did like, you, were you like halfway in between or what? I at Granite. felt like more confident only because, okay, I think it was like a 40 point lead. And then I knew this workout would be good for me because I like, the we devil it. press yeah. and it's also like in my ideal time domain and then like <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good at legless and rope climbs and rowing so like I was I was like 95% confident like just if you do what you can do and just like do make sure you have clean reps and that I would be able to do it so that was yeah. better as compared if it was like so one of the workouts on day two then I'd be <laughs> a little worried you know yeah. but that's just how it just sucks you know, the order of the events that, you know, after day two, you know, I was in seventh after day two that, but like if the, or the events were reversed and day, you know, day three was day two, yeah. then I would have had like a significant leap. I would have been like even further ahead. Maybe I would have been in third and then I would have had to just manage and like, then yeah. and feel people feel, chasing you yeah. and coming up the and leaderboard then like, against so it. Yeah. it's definitely nicer to climb the leaderboard than to drop it and be like, okay, just like stay in that, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that the semifinal structure, which to me is the same as regionals yeah. is more stressful than the actual games? hundred percent. Yeah. It's the most stressful Ever. Like, I feel like once I make the games, I'm just like, all right, you just do what you can do. And it already it feels like an accomplishment to make the games. But that, you know, regionals, it's like you put in all this work and that's like, that's how you get your ticket. And it's yeah. like, 
10 times more stressful than and the games. And there's so few scores there's, and a mistake exactly. gets amplified. That's exactly why. Like yeah. I'm always at the game, you know, there's just so many events that you, you know, you, you will make mistakes, but like you can still do better overall. But then yeah, regionals, it's like six, seven events and it's like, you have to execute them. And like, because there's so few girls too, then they can like get in between. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was super stressed. Yeah. So <laughs> we've, uh, we've talked about this before and we've never really had like a big conversation, but you had said, this is your last year as an individual. Obviously I felt pressure to try to help you get to the games and make it a really good last year. So we did that, which is cool. But Thanks. in that process, did you think that you'd ever compete again as a master's athlete or like, you're like, all right, I'm done. I, I did it. Now I'm going there and I'm going to try to crush it on my last time and walk away. I mean, yeah, there's always the thought that like, you know, the future that I, I still love the sport of CrossFit and I love competing. So I probably want to come back. Oh, you mean like if I didn't make it or wait? just in general? Oh, in general. Yeah. Yeah. I always wonder that like, as people are going through the experience when they say that it's already their last one, but you've seen, I've seen athletes all the time. They're like, no, this is my last. I heard Sam Briggs was done for like four straight years. Oh, yeah. And she's still competing. I've been saying it for the last three years. <laughs> you have? But now it's like. <laughs> now you're like for well, real. <laughs> if anything, it's like taking a break. Yeah, yeah. To like, yeah, maybe have a family or do yeah. go see my family that I haven't seen for a long time, you know, yeah. just being in another country. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, I think in the future I'd consider, I'd want to come back. I mean, this is what I've done so long and what I love to do. So yeah. Would yeah. you ever do team? I could consider that's how I started. Team is definitely more fun. Yeah. Less, a little less stressful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially if you're one of the fittest people on the team. I watch sometimes people on teams and I'm like, it's gotta be nice that they like, they don't have to try as hard. Yeah, because they just wait, for the, <laughs> yeah. other person, wait for the partner. The weak link. <laughs> yeah, no, I told when Mia and Brandy were talking, to, like they were trying to get a, a team going before they had Mike and Kyle Thanks. confirmed. I was like, I'm going to be the weakest person on the team. You guys are going to be <laughs> waiting on me and I'm going to be anxious and like throwing up on every workout. Oh just trying not to be the weak link. <laughs> it is hard. I, yeah, I remember in my first year on a team, like the curls were legit. So yeah. like I had to keep up with them and I like feel like every workout was so hard. It pushes you. Yeah, it pushes you for sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> are you looking forward to games training? Yeah. It, game training is the most enjoyable part. Like, everything before that is just so yeah regional or semi-specific yeah and like now it's just like the fun odd stuff like i love um my, or road biking i love like yeah just doing anything to like get outside and so yeah. and that's the kind of stuff i feel like i'm better at than like super structured being in the gym yeah. and all that stuff yeah so should we have a consult and talk about all our training priorities now uh, yeah. so here's what we should talk about this is what the people want to know is what was up with those sunglasses you were wearing? Uh, Looking like was, a baller out those there. Those are my, those are my uh, road bikes. Like, so that's in, amazing. I I would have never pinned you as like a cool sunglasses person. I have other which, ones, but those ones, ones they? they're like legit, uh, uh, road biking sunglasses. They're they almost look like pit. They're like Roka, <laughs> but they stay on so good. You can do like a muscle up or whatever, and they don't move. Ah. Like I wanted, I would, I would wear other ones too, but they don't stay on like this. It's like sealed to your face. Oh, so you can like actually work out and yeah. not have them come off. Are you yeah. sponsored by them? No, well, then don't plug <laughs> them. <Akeem laughs> legit. Did you see his are like yellow? <laughs> I thought that's what he was talking about. Are those the same yeah. ones? The one that he had? Yeah. Uh, I like, had to go to CBS and get a pair of okay. glasses before the event. It was they've, so bright. Yeah. No, but they've honestly been like the best investment. They're like a really good sport sunglasses. Like sure for like looks and casual wear, I'd wear other ones. But like, yeah, when you, yeah. And they like don't fog up. They're legit. <laughs> I need to get them. What's the yeah. best placement you've ever had at the games? Uh, tied for third. So technically fourth, I lost the tiebreaker. <laughs> oh. That was my best. Yeah. And this is going to be your ninth or eighth time you said? Well, eighth as an individual night. I was one year on a team. Okay. So now that you've been nine. this prolific in CrossFit, what's it like to get all the special treatment? What special treatment? <laughs> 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 I feel like I've always been kind of the, like every year they probably don't expect me to make it. They're like, oh, she's done. She's done. And then you just keep going. And they're like, oh, I guess she's still she's pretty here. good. <laughs> yeah. Because I think I'm just like always... I, like I was telling you, I'm more of like, I ramp up for the games and I don't, maybe I don't stay as high yeah. level through like the open and regional. So like yeah. I don't pl place as well. And then the games 
just as better for me because I'm a better all around athlete. And then like, I feel like every year they're like, they're like, wow, we didn't expect her to be there. Or even like, I feel like every year the commentators or something or like this year, I think it was West Pie. Like I didn't expect her to do good on the like thruster run. And in my mind, I was like, it was not a run workout. It was like a thruster workout. Like, but yeah. then also, yeah, that. Oh, that and was then, also a great moment of the comp. Oh yeah. So, yeah, but it just, for my, yeah, people are constantly like underestimating me. So that's the cool part. I've always liked to be the underdog. And so <laughs> what do you think creates the favoritism in CrossFit? In the, I mean, obviously doing really well. Like yeah. I think Tia, yeah, like that makes sense if you win yeah, four straight. All the time. But I feel like there's some people that don't get as much credit as they should. And, yeah. and vice versa. Some people who get a ton of credit and visibility and I'm like, Oh shit, we're going to name names. Yeah. Never made the games. Names. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, and they get is. part of like the inner circle. Yeah, you know, exactly. There's- do you get to warm up while other people are corralled? <laughs> Does that happen to you at all? You get like extra warm up time while other people are corralled? <laughs> not. Do you get no. extra warm up time like while other first, people are corralled? I'm like the first one there. I'm there on time. And then people are like, other people are pushing the, the limits of like, you know, they're calling them and they're like, you need to check in and they're still warming up. And I was, mm. I've always You're like, a rule follower. I'm a rule follower. Yeah. I'm like, you said 20 <laughs> minutes. So I'm here. <laughs> You're staying yeah. disciplined. Yeah. No yeah. wonder you got tied for fourth or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. No. But yeah, I know it's interesting. Like one example of a underrated, per- like Kristen Holte, like she smashes all the time, but she probably doesn't yeah. get as much recognition as some of the other girls. Yeah. Like, she's what taken second before. Yeah. She's yeah. taken second. She always crushes the, like a lot of the endurance things. And yeah. so, and there's like a few, but I don't, yeah, I don't know. Maybe some people are more into their social media. And for me, I'm just not, um, yeah, more, like I said, don't more an introvert yeah, and don't, like, I don't expect, we love it. Yeah. I don't expect We'll get you that sunglasses sponsorship and we might <laughs> have to yeah. pimp those out a couple of times. But. Yeah. And don't I'm not, change. I'm not like mad that I don't get like recognition. And like, it's, it's more exciting for me being the underdog and the, like the dark horse and like, like, yeah, yeah it's just like, I play like a game and like, yeah, they don't yeah. see me coming. And then like, I, it's like my favorite when I hear comments of like, wow, I didn't expect you to like do that. Or even I remember that one, there's like games workout with like run in between. And then there was like something else, uh, Oh my gosh, it's 2019. <laughs> running and something. Yeah, there's running and then there's like bike and some sled pull or stuff in between. And that was like one of my best workouts. And Dave was like, wow, like I didn't expect her to do well on that running workout. And I'm just like, I'm not a bad runner. Yeah. I'm just like compared <laughs> to Sam Briggs. Like yeah. I'm not like as fast a runner as her. That's what happens when you're on the game stage or going against these elite athletes. And yeah. then like, you know, everyday people see that me compared to Sam Briggs and they're like, Oh, you should probably work on your running. I'm yeah. like, well, my running compared to you, like I run sub six minute, mo- you know, I like know. I'm, so I'm not <laughs> slow. <laughs> I'm just like not as fast as Sam yeah. Briggs, you know? Yeah. I called somebody out about that in the stand. Somebody, uh, another coach came up to me and they're like, man, CrossFit watching CrossFitters run is just really painful. And I was like, yeah, well, watching runners try to pick up those dumbbells and do thrusters would be really fucking yeah. painful too. They no, wouldn't be able even to more pick, painful. Uh, I bet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They wouldn't literally wouldn't be able to pick. Oh, it's just like, ass knee, I know. It's stupid because it's like anyone yeah. who uh, running is paired with something else. Of course your rum- running form is going to yeah. be hurting a little bit. Like yeah. if you just run like then, yeah. you know, yeah, you can run a lot better. Was, uh, what was your favorite moment of the comp? Travis said the snatch you had, a. I feel like there were a couple big, good moments. What do you have a favorite of what happened at Granite games? I would almost have to say the thruster run workout because yeah, like, you know, Max, like before that I was like, it was like, I couldn't figure out my rack position. And like, I was just after testing out four times, I like felt like I was doing so bad. And I was like, was well, something's just not right. Like I'm not yeah. like I, and then I thought and that Brynn- I, to who took she took set ended oh, up yeah. taking third in the event I think yeah. she was crushing it oh yeah she training. like squats a freaking house like she's impressive has like really good rack position so like I mean I'm like pretty strong too so I I was like I feel like I'm you know I should do a lot better so I was just really hard on myself and I just like going into it I'm like okay like I'm just gonna do what I can do. And uh, like, and then I did like way faster than what I did in practice. So that just like felt like an accomplishment and I was so nervous before. So just like overcoming that, like I felt really good. And then, you know, like after day one, like walking back from the venue, like it just, I felt like more accomplished and yeah. it was just like a peaceful walk back. And there was these little toads <laughs> everywhere. Walking, and I was like, that's kind of the moments I like, like I'm not, uh, you know, maybe a, other people like the being in the crowd or the, you know, yeah. but me just 
having that accomplishment myself and then yeah just, just they're, standing they're, with the toads yeah, yeah standing with the toads they're really cute <laughs> I'm just, so that, that yeah. was, uh, you know, there were that. a lot of toads in oh, between yeah. the, on the walkway yeah that was my favorite moment as well i feel like there were a lot of ups and downs so was that there was that you crushed a snatch tweaked your elbow a little bit so i got a little nervous oh, yeah. then you crushed the expectations for that. I yeah. mean, we were saying like, okay, maybe this is damage control, yeah. like top 15, top 10. You ended up taking fifth, mm -hmm. I think overall in that ended day one in first. And I was standing next to Akeem and I was like, I'm so pumped up. I was like, I want to give her a hug when she comes <laughs> out. And I was like, no, I'll just give her a fist bump. <laughs> like, no, I'm old, but that was the best moment. And then day two after the fire and the bad day, I was like, Oh shit. And then day three was like a super high ramping mm -hmm. up day, finishing strong type day. So I feel like it was a little bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, no, for sure. I was happy like about that. it. But yeah, that I think it it's always more rewarding to do better at the things you don't expect to do good at. Cause I expect to do good at the snatch. Like that's you know, just I know that that's one of my biggest strengths. Yeah. So so it's almost not as rewarding. But when you do something like you know, people don't expect you to do good at or, or that you didn't expect yourself to do good at. That's just, yeah, yeah. It's better. I find it really <laughs> impressive. The warm up area at that event was a tent on a, um, like a parking slant. lot <laughs> that was legitimate slanted. So the barbells, people were like sticking rubber underneath so they wouldn't roll. Yeah. And it was like clearly slanted to the side. So people were like stepping to the side. And I was wondering like, is this going to make people like technically weird that when they go out on the platforms, they're going to miss because of it? You miss your first lift. Did you think that played a role into it or uh, it's just like it that you were waiting for a long time? And uh, it could have, yeah, one of the two, but sometimes, yeah, t I usually miss my first. And then after that, I get a feel for what the platform feels like, but I definitely might've been, might've played a factor. I mean, I know someone else hyperextended their elbow as well. And yeah. like, I don't, I feel like that doesn't usually happen to me. So maybe I just, it like, by warming up there, you had a different idea of like where your overhead yeah. is. And then yeah. I don't know. Are Were you part of the athlete union stuff that went on last year? No. The athlete calls, none of it. I mean, I was on the call and then they like cut me after they cut the, you know, they did the top oh, 40 after they and changed then like, the rules. yeah. And then I no longer had any insight and I had to <laughs> ask Travis, well, like, well, you know, what's going on? Yeah. And I was like, that's and, not fair. Like yeah. nobody else knows what the heck's going on, you know? Yeah. Trav and Noah were like missing calls. I was like, did you know? It's like, oh damn it. I missed the first 30 minutes of call. I'm like, dude, you're supposed to keep us updated on the sport. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder too, cause I wonder how I know that people were really bummed out about the prize purses of regionals. The games came out and they were up from where they were previously, but I feel like warm up areas, judging athletes, special treatment, like certain athletes yeah. get more time to warm up or whatever it is. I wonder how all that stuff's going to get communicated. If athletes are going to have an opportunity to communicate it. Yeah. Do you get, do you, I asked you those questions. Maybe they're leading questions. Does it bother you having participated in the sport at the highest level for 10 years? Or you just kind of do your thing and don't even worry about it. Yeah. I've always just kind of done my thing and not really say, been like money. Shit. I'm not like <laughs> money motivated, but it's kind of thinking to that of that. The regional space less, well, it used to be, you know, different entities putting on the events. So they probably had more prize money. Now it's just, I mean, but I, <laughs> are those events, not run by CrossFit now? Because I think Loud and Live put that on. I saw the Loud and Live sports booth oh, really? and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Just whatever the change was, I think that was the yeah, what it was. The effect. Yeah. So you punch your ticket. Have you got your hotel and your flights and stuff to Madison? Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I should get on top of that. Yeah, I'll send you the stuff. Okay. Of just, where we I want to bring my dog. <laughs> You oh. want to what? I maybe want to bring my dog. Well, maybe he can go to the babysitter. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that hotel that we got probably doesn't have it. I'd have to look. How much it. do you think it's going to cost you to go to the games? It's always. Okay. And do you like budget for that? Or yeah, is it just like we get there when we get there. I mean, I definitely, yeah, try to save money and not spend too much. Like they usually block out like the edge water, but it's so expensive. Yeah. So I think like the last two years, I just went to a cheaper hotel. I mean, it's just yeah, and sometimes I don't like to be around like all the. The hustle Shoot, and the bustle. Hustle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I like just, you know, I just, when I go to the venue, that's when I'm around the people and like, I don't want to always. Yeah. So, but yeah, a kitchen would be nice. So got to look into that. Yeah. What <laughs> would, where would you stay with the dog? An Airbnb? 
maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or I think there's some dog friendly hotel. If not, I'll get, I mean, he has a dog babysitter here that yeah. I found. So that's okay. <laughs> he I had just, a good, he had a good trip. Yeah. He got really fat though. He, he must did. Have, they must have fed him so much. It Why? looks like he gained like five pounds. No way. <laughs> he, yeah. I li- I gave him like two bags maybe of treats and I literally <laughs> made up maybe. He was missing you. Yeah. And then yeah. he like came back and had so much energy and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what have you been doing? No, he's not fat. He was like, after being astray, he was kind of underweight. So yeah. it's probably good. Yeah. Yeah. He is a, a, like, yeah, thin, thin. he's probably where he needs to be. <laughs> yeah. he's I can't deny him cheese either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> <His eyes. laughs> I had to recently put my cat on a diet. Oh, really? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause I found a stray cat, like kitten, like real yeah. young. And when I first got him, I, I haven't had a cat in, since I was like a kid. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't remember how much I should have probably Googled it, but this fr- dude was like starving. So yeah. his appetite at first was just insatiable. And so I was like, yeah, keep feeding him. Cause he's like yeah. real thin and going to die probably. Yeah. And then I just never like corrected, <laughs> corrected after that. Yeah. So this dude just kind of started chunking out. That's what happens so, yeah, we're on a diet now, me and Ricky love food. And they're just yeah. like, that's the best part when they get yeah. fed. You and know? they were starving. Yeah. Before. They were starving. So they think yeah. they're starving all the time. Yeah. 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 I think he's finally learning like, Oh yeah, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be all right. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I got, Chris. What yeah, else that's all you I got, got. man. This has been great. Can we do this again sometime? Yeah, um, what about in like four months? Because you're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are you're not allowed. Yeah, we're going to trap you here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, put in the comments below if you want Alessandra to not go back to California and stay here in Georgia with TTT. Yeah, it is pretty I'm cool gonna here. I'm going to go in there and comment. <laughs> That's I do like it here. Yeah. My dog likes it here too because there's lots of squirrels. So oh, yeah. yeah All right, we're, we're halfway there. Factor there. <laughs> yeah, we got to get him... Uh, We'll kidnap him on the final day. We'll kidnap him. From, <laughs> Hunt you down. <laughs> yeah. Nobody messes with I'm going to look up Rover.com and see where he goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, congratulations again. Thank you.